augmented reality is probably going to revolutionise the way we communicate as humans almost. It's that far advanced in terms of where it's going to be, in terms of the way we can use it, that it frightens me. However, I want to break it down a little bit so you can get your head around it. You might have heard the term AR. So VR is what we've been doing up until right now. Now I'm moving into what's known as AR. And augmented reality, if you look at the description here, it's a technology that superimposes digital things into our world. We will coexist between real things. This jug is real. And we will have a digital thing right next to it. And we won't probably know what the difference is. And you will have to touch it to make sure it's actually there. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate it. You can make up your own minds. This guy here is wearing a pair of AR wearables. And as a result, the information on how to fix this particular join is asking him to put the eight bolts on or something like that. He can see the digital feed. We can't, but he can because he's wearing some AR wearables. She can see the vase. She can hold it, she can interact with it, because she's wearing a pair of AR wearables. He is on an oil rig or on a job site, and he has AR, and he also has remote assistants coming in. And these two combined are very powerful. The idea that an expert can be in your ear telling you what to do, but you can also be overlaying instructions this is kind of where the technology is going. So what I would like to do is give you a bit of an idea on what AR can do. And this is my chosen platform at the moment to develop on. This bug, <laughs> these, looks like a big fly, doesn't it? But these AR wearables, which are these ones here, This one here is known as the Magic Leap. And so when we put the Magic Leap on, I can see digital things, or it knows where my hands are because it has sensors, it has projection, and it has a camera that I can project what I'm seeing back to office so they can advise me on what to do. So we're developing out now on this wearable some pretty, pretty far out things. Now, the one thing I'm working on is overlaying satellite imagery in the paddock. So when I'm standing in the paddock, I can see growth. I can see last year's rainfall. And I've got data because it knows where I'm standing and I can overlay information out in the field. I can also connect the Internet of Things and I can look at sensors and see where the pump is running or how far the trough needs to be filled up. I can bring in weather, and as a result, we are like Tom Cruise in Minority Report. It does work. I'm using it, right? But that particular headset is $5,000. And, you know, I worry if I drop that. The other thing is it's quite clunky. It's quite big. That's an Android-based operating system. So I have to hook that on my pocket. Or it comes with a little shoulder strap. And I can wear it out in the field, like so. And you're seeing through that as well, aren't you? That, oh yeah, that's yeah. the big difference. Sorry, that's a yeah. pretty yeah. good thing to bring up. If I was wearing that, I wouldn't see the real world, would yeah. I? Bang into things. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as I put these on, like how many things? Put your fingers up. Two. So I can see two fingers, but I also can see the motor and I can see where it's telling me to change the spark plugs. When these come down in price, and they will, when they are smaller and less clunky, and they will, we'll probably be able to buy them just like glasses from the BP service station, I don't know. <laughs> but at the moment, this is where we're at. But to be honest with you, we're probably more on a mobile phone. AR is definitely, definitely possible on a mobile phone, and I'm going to demonstrate that now. All right. Langdean Marino Stud. 
beautiful looking ram, right? I said, imagine if I wanted to buy that ram, but I didn't want to travel to Dunny Do up in New South Wales. So I challenged my team, I said, can we rebuild that ram? I want to bring that ram into my living room and look at it. And so we did. We went out and we took photos, front, back, sideways, left, right, up and down. We also took video because we, my understanding is when you buy rams, you want to look at the way they walk and that's a very important part of buying is genetics and things like that. And so once we'd done that, then we thought, well, how cool would it be if we could look at the ram and then overlay its ASBBs and go, wow, that's its breeding and its history and, you know, could it have facial recognition? And, you know, I was sort of talking about how we could do that. <laughs> We've got it down to a Bluetooth in its ear. That's the closest we can get. But by having a Bluetooth, those, those can pick up the Bluetooth and overlay the data. But if we want to bring it into the living room, we need to recreate it as a model. Now, this isn't the finished product. I think it'll work. I'll just see. I'll give it a click. farmvr.com slash farmvr 3D model. Here we go. Remember I told you that we, re we create things as web modules first. So this one we did the same thing. So here is our RAM and as a result we can now interact with the RAM. So the first thing to do is to create it as a 3D animal. Look at it, twist it, move it, up and down, zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want to do. Alright, that's just a video of it. The next step is to get it off the computer and into AR. So how we can do that, we can do it with our phones. If you want to, now would be the time to look on the Apple Store for an app called Farm AR. Farm R. I'm going to bring it up here on the screen. take farm AR is I want it to be a wearable that farmers wear in the paddock to overlay data but also to record things for their workers to bring in AR objects and I haven't bloody it's going to be slow it's like got a 10 second lag should I we'll just work with the 10 second lag all right so what I'm going to do here is I've clicked start. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm mapping the floor. We have to turn. Oh, that's right. I'm mapping the floor and I've got little white dots. Now that my phone knows where the floor is, I'm going to pick my merino and I'm going to put in in our room. And so I can say, come over here, Bella. And he walks over here, look, and he's right there. In fact, if I can even bring you guys. And if I want to, I can check out his teeth and put it in the mouth. And if I wanted to, I could have made this a whole animal. So it could have been like the rumen of a cow. So I could push through and go into the body and then out again. I can interact with the animal, get him to eat. I can walk him around. And in fact, if I want to compare him with a suffix, I can also bring in a suffix. And so now I have the two breeds right here and I don't actually have to go up to Dunny Doon 
to check out this RAM if I trust the breeder and I believe it's a good enough replica of what I'm buying based on the genetics and all the information I'll say yeah put him on a truck send him down and so this would potentially revolutionize the way we buy livestock or farm machinery or anything for that instance you know other other companies like IKEA are using this technology to put furniture into rooms but imagine if I put on these wearables and I was able to bring up the RAM in the room wearing wearables the difference would be that I have now got hands, I'm not holding my phone, see? so that's what wearables do wearables basically free up our hands to do what we're designed to do and fix stuff and build stuff so if I wanted to run a laser down my paddock and I was able to do some fencing I could run the laser wearing my wearables when they're less clunky and I could start to fence or if I want to overlay data or if I want to bring that RAM in the room so what we did is we set out to achieve that and now when you put on these wearables you can put the merino here and you can put the suffix here and you can see them, you can move around them but the other thing we can do is we can interact with them so now we're moving from just looking at the sheep is that we're going to start to move these sheep in the yard and we're going to move them around and they're going to know where I'm at and they'll sense I'm close and then I pull back and so we're teaching students how to work with animals in AR as a bit of a promotion we went up and we took the, um, we took the digital RAM and we got it to meet the real RAM and uh, we did that at the uh, sheep show in Bendigo you choose the animal yeah. and you place it on the floor you'll see a little round circle that allows you to place it on the floor and you pull the trigger again Chicken. so this is the yeah, you're doing that good yeah. this is the digital RAM meeting the real RAM and as technology improves you can kind of see the similarities, you know, they're not too dissimilar although I took a few shortcuts to build it um, you get the idea so we're working with some stud producers we're working with, you know, potentially working with tractor companies but this technique of bringing products or something into a room there's definitely somewhere this is going and I'm going to keep working hard to sort of unravel where this type of storytelling will go How are you going Grace? I have a tractor. You have a tractor now, yes. <laughs> it's basically just a 